Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. And in this one, we're on the ground in Ottawa. Lovely CYOW, the new Roman Designs, my home airport. But digressing. So we're going to jump in and we're going to go into round two of the radio panel with the CRJ and the bonus script panel. So first things first, we have already published this panel. So if you're looking to download it, don't forget you have to be running the Elvar Bridge. There is a couple things that require the Elvar Bridge, uh, like VHF stuff and other audio panel related things. You need to be on the beta or you need to be on the alpha to run the Elvar Bridge. We'd click on something. So something's highlighted. Now you go to online snippets. We're gonna go for complete device and just search for my name and you'll find the Microsoft Flight Sim ASCRJ radio panel version 2 and that's the one that you're going to want to go ahead and download. So what did we change? Well, we wanted to make it work better. So some of the stuff was a little bit tricky in the way these audio listens inside of the sim don't actually necessarily trigger uh, VATSIM, especially if you are listening to it, the listens will work, but the transmit wasn't actually going to switch it. So we did a few little tricks uh, to take care of that. And then making the audio listens a little bit smarter, what you'll notice we did is we added some checks. So now when this switch is set, so when we put the position of column one, it's gonna enable that VHF pop-up. And if we switch out of it, you'll see that the audio automatically goes to COM2 because we're now listening on COM2, but it's not transmitting yet. Still focused on one because we haven't held the transmit button to click into place. Now we're going to go back to COM1 and because nothing is listening on COM2, it automatically failed the transmit back over, uh, but we'll hold the button in there to set it in the SIM. We do have a condition for showing active frequency uh, when it's not held and uh, standby frequency on the right hand side when it's not held. Meaning if we hold that button down, it will switch over and show us the volume level so we can adjust the volume level and we can actually turn the listen on and off manually with the outer ring. While holding the button, like we said, the inner ring is gonna be the volume level and when the outer ring will be whether or not the listen is popped up. Press it for a short time. It's going to transfer. If it's held for a long time and the lower radio selector, so this is not on COM1, then it's going to change the COM1 transmit select. So this is the data value the standard sim data value that we've got our vpilot following but the ui we want to see the knob switch so what we're doing is we're basically setting both data parameters this way and that'll switch our transmit when the lower device selector is on com one so when we set it to com one at the same time what this will allow us to do is now change our spacing mode. So on our panel, we can change the SIM in and out of the spacing mode. Uh, so either the 833 kilohertz spacing mode or the 0 0.025 type spacing mode. Since we're in an area that I don't need 8.33, I'm gonna run it instead so it's easier to dial up those frequencies. Or like I said, hold it down, changes the display, go back to our greater spacing and we're good to go. Same thing applies for COM2. Both have to be set to COM2 for us to then manipulate uh, the spacing for COM2. Finally, if the selector button is 
uh, and the spacing mode, this will change the calm uh, display. So up here, when spacing mode is equal to one, uh, what we wanted to do was turn off the left digits because there's only five digits. Uh, you don't see all six like the GUI shows. So this will cut off the left digits. So when we're in the 833 spacing, uh, we don't need to see the one on the panel, but we want all three digits after the decimal. And then uh, we can cut off the other way when we're in the other spacing. So we'll cut off the right side digits because I don't need to see three digits. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we put in some intelligence for turning on the audio listens, which also tracks the audio listen for VATSIM. If we set this into position one or into COM one, this is going to set COM one to listen. And if we move the radio selector out, we check to see if the bottom's in COM one. So what you'll see here is when we move it out, it turns off COM one. However, if we were in COM1 on the lower unit when we switch it out, then it won't turn it off because the lower unit is currently in COM1. But now we move the lower unit to COM2, and that goes down. We move 1 back to 1, it goes up, and if we move COM2 to, say, NAV1, it turns off COM2. So we put a lot more smarts into how that works. And of course, everything else has stayed the same. Nothing has changed. Uh, still controlling the nav frequencies and still having to use this fake LVAR. Now, some people say it doesn't work. I think you need to check here to make sure this isn't showing red and that you need to create this LVAR in your session, right? So this is your own local variable. So I created a new local variable. It's a local called fake nav standby. And this is where we're doing the copy and pasting and little seashell game to move the radio frequencies around. So right now we are tuned into 114.6. 114.6 is the YOW VOR and it's 12. 0.1 nautical miles from here over uh, to the northwest. And as we dial in to about the 320 radial, you'll notice we're just off of it uh, as we're off to the side. If we take off of runway 32, uh, we're going to fly straight to that VOR. Now, as I swap to 109.5, takes a second to tune in and now 109.5 is the localizer here for runway 7. It's 0.4 nautical miles away. We swap it. We're back on to YOW VOR and then of course as we dial it in we're going to get the swing coming in. So that's how we know that this is working and it drives the actual data in the sim. It just won't drive the RTU. The RTU is not going to update. Don't expect it to update. It's not going to be correct, right? Because we are not able to actually control the data that's in the RTU. So you ignore the RTU. What you're putting in is what's driving the actual sim. What did we do for ATC? So we've also got a script panel and we published this. So if we go to online snippets, if we go script panel, complete device, you're going to see Microsoft Flight Sim CRJ VATSIM ATC. So what we're doing here is when on the radio panel, I go to my transponder. So on my radio panel in the transponder, the knob the outer knob is controlling my transponder control on the left. The inner knob is adjusting our transponder value. So the standard transponder one value will change and you'll see that actually update in the RTU. And I'm using the button to increment the 
control, just like kind of standard. But the outer knob is changing the transponder ATC select switch. And so when we select number one, it's switching in the SIM and the RTU now comes out of standby mode and is in 333. So what we've done is we've created a script panel and that script panel is going to track that ADC LVAR. And when it's equal to zero, we want the transponder state to be four, which is altitude reporting. And that is going to make mode C go on. And if we turn it off, you'll notice mode C goes back off, back on, away we go. So when it doesn't equal zero, I want the script panel control row to be off. And that's just, that's just controlling the LED. Now on this one, when the LED is equal to one, now we're going to set both transponder state one and transponder state two to ones. So they both go to standby and we'll set that to yellow. If I could change the text labels instead of just the colors, I'd be doing more with one of these. And then we've got ATC select two. The thing is, is under the hood, what's actually happening is when you activate ATC select two, it actually copies that 4711 into transponder one. So it's not actually using transponder two and tracking transponder two state. So here we're just going to set transponder one to four. So it goes active because what you'll see is here when we move it over, right? It automatically goes to 4711. We go back to standby. That's still the value that's loaded in there. And if we go back to zero, it'll go back to the left sides ATC. So you just have to be careful. That's where you can get the two different codes, but technically it's coming from the same one. I use these a lot for a lot of different functions where I want to take certain data and force it through. So this was a great example where the ATC um, transponder data is not connecting internally into the SIM. So now I'm using the script panel to manage that for me. Let's just get up in the air real quick and we'll show how we're tracking the VOR perfectly fine. And we'll now crank our heading in for an intercept angle. And there it's coming. So let's go into nav mode. It's going to track the VOR. And that was a little bit too tight of a turn. My bad. It'll, it'll recover itself. I could also cheat because I don't really care what actual radial we're on. Basically, what we're showing you is that we're controlling it from here. So now let's go ahead and let's go. And we just, we just uh, flag flip. So you saw the VOR go away, come back, and now it, uh, the arrow is behind us. So we just are over top and flying outbound. So if we wanted to fly south, obviously, And now, of course, the plane's going to go off and get it. All right, so we already know that's working. Let's go ahead and we're going to hop into Navigraph. And we have an ILS 07. And 07 is 109.5. Uh, basically, you can go to a Mobi uh, and also go to a Vizzle. So we know that we want 109.5. 
So while we're headed in this direction, let's go ahead and let's sink our heading bug. And, uh, yeah, we'll go, I guess, a little south. And we'll start heading in that general direction. And we're going to dial in 109.5. So we need 109.5. We'll take that off to the side. And we have 109.5 dialed in. So we swap. And you can see localizer, course. So now we're going to set our course, uh, 071. So 071 will be our uh, course inbound. So as you can see, this is working. This is swapping. It is giving us all of our, our data. Uh, so now let's go ahead and see if it will intercept. All right, localizer one, approach mode. And glide slow is below us, so it's armed. And gears down, three green. And autopilot is out. So... Wow, trim is way off. Do, do, do. So there we go. The radio hackery, the hack of all hacks, does work and changes the radio panel. Cool. So there you go. It uh, it all works. And now as we tax back to a gate, thank you very much for taking time to watch this video. Hopefully Rev 2 of the audio panel for the CRJ is better and you like the new script panel. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come along with us next time. Have a great day.